turned out to be a pretty de excellent evening weather-wise. Oh, it's been tremendous. We thought we were getting rain here in the way about an hour ago, and it's, it's bypassed us, so it's a perfect evening. Boy, Keen, you, you watch her with that big wrap on the right knee, and for her to be able to seal off a charging player like that is really takes a lot of effort and desire. We're coming up on the halfway point of the first half, and now we've got a substitution coming in for the Irish. It'll be number six, Katie Hall, a 5'6 sophomore, and she will come in to replace number 10, or check that, number 18, and that's uh, Anna Ventimiglia. 21-26 remaining here in the first half of play. Cathedral in the green jerseys going from left to right. The Penn Kingsmen in their white jerseys moving in the opposite direction. Whitaker now with an opportunity at the 18. Tries to turn on the ball, but she didn't get quite enough clockwise spin on the ball, Dan. Yeah, and it will be a goal kick for Penn. But Cathedral is still finding ways right now to, to, to penetrate. Uh, Penn's, Penn's got to get a little bit more organized in the back and, and try to stop this Cathedral attack because Cathedral's got them on the ropes a little bit right now. Now in the midfield, third on the play, they go 50-50, knocked out of there at defense nicely by Keene, and it goes over to the crowd on the far side, and it will be a throw-in for the Fighting Irish. Far side throw-in on the play by Katie Sapancic, number 15, the 5'6 senior for the Irish, and she gets it inbounds, coming up on the halfway point here, the first half of play, and I tell you what, Dan, right now Penn needs to get a little bit more offensive firepower from their midfield. And what they just need to do is, is, again, play the ball on the ground, play the feet, and get the ball outside a little bit and, and open up Cathedral's defense a little bit and try to find that, that, that opening behind yeah. that undefended space. And if they can do that, they'll get some opportunities. Sellers now trying to get a through ball over to Sarah Blass, but uh, good job by Cathedral. Now here comes the speedster, Mariah Whitaker, the 5'6 sophomore, up now uh, between the circle now and the play to Warner. Crossover dribbling ability. Good job of stick to itness by the Penn defense. But a pass now goes off the noggin, and now Cathedral will regain possession. They're in the offensive third right now. And again, Keane with an aggressive play, and she takes a tumble, and they're going to call a foul on the Irish. And what a nice play by the junior, 5'7 junior, Leanne Keane for the Kingsmen. She's tough. I mean, she's not going to give an inch. She knows this is... This game is for all the marbles, and she's going to give it everything she's got, and she's doing that right now, playing very, very tough. Talked about the rest of the Penn uh, semi-state play. They had a 2-1 to -one win over Wawasee over in the Crown Point semi-state before knocking off Richard Moore's Lake Central Indians by a score of 2-1, to -one, and that was a real Donnybrook over there on Bulldog Turf in Crown Point. Now off the right side on the play for the Kingsmen is Alyssa Johnston, the 5'10 senior. She gets her pocket picked on the play, but the Irish run out of real estate, and it will be a throw-in for the Kingsmen. Mallory Hart, the senior, now will go with the throw-in, but first of all, we're going to have a substitution as Kate Burr, a 5'11 junior, will come into the ball game, and you see number 13 exiting, and that's Nicole Fendora, and Nicole is an academic all-stater. Right side now for Penn, trying to inbound on the play. And again, the Kingsmen are going to have a throw in as they pick up a little bit of real estate on the far side with 18-37 remaining in the first half and Cathedral leading by a score of one to nothing. The black and gold throw it in on the play. Now they're going to try with a left-footed cross in the 18, knocked up the elevator shaft on the play by Whitaker for Cathedral. Good header on the far side to save the corner and the possession for number 16, Katie Wacker, for the Irish. You see, both, both teams are going to start using subs with that first game in the morning, Mike. You know, they're, they're gonna, their legs are going to start getting a little bit heavy, and you see Cathedral is really going to, so far, a, a pretty decent job of rotating players in and trying to keep those fresh legs. Now, the other thing you really got to do is pump the water. You may not be thirsty out there, yeah. but, boy, cramps can settle in in this cold yeah, weather absolutely. in a hurry. And it's, it's not easy to drink a lot of water when, you, when it is a little bit more chilly, but it's, it's a very important point. The other thing, Dan, that we, we, we talked about in the broadcast during the boys' game, it's interesting when you come down here, you see the different coaching styles. And the one thing that I thought was really was interesting was Bill Veith and his staff pretty much sitting yeah. the whole ball game. Meanwhile, yeah. Jamie Sensiball wearing a, a path yeah. here on the grass right. on the near side. And I know you were a guy yeah. who didn't like to sit in the no, lounge chair, that's for I, sure. I, I, I got to be standing and moving, but uh, Bill is so low-key, and, and uh, he, he doesn't get too, you know, 
you, you take it wrong, he's not excited about the game. He right. is. But uh, he's just so low-key and a class act. But, uh, yeah, I can't sit still like he does. I don't, know how, I don't know how he does it. Nice booming kick by Emily Johnson, the Penn netminder. 5'9 seniors. We mentioned a microscopic 0.395 goals against average coming in here to the state finals. And now coming in is going to be number six, Paige Strowinski. She's a 5'4 junior for the Kingsmen. And I seen the lineup for Mike Luber will be number five, Sarah Blaz, the 5'5 junior. 16.43 remaining here in the first half of play at Coon Stadium. 1-0 lead for the Cathedral Lady Irish. Nice run now here on the left wing by Cathedral. Knocked away nicely by Penn deep in their own zone, and now Alden knocks it out of there. Good speed shown on the left wing by the Irish. And doing a great job over there on the far side was Colleen McGrath. Penn, Penn defenders are giving them a little bit, little bit of time, a little bit of space. They've got to close the gap a little bit and put a little bit more pressure on Cathedral's attack. Otherwise, Cathedral's going to continue to penetrate and get those opportunities. So the a little one, bit better pressure from Penn might help them a little bit. The one thing that I noticed about Penn against Wanger, Dan, which I think was, was really a great move on their part, is on the defensive third, not playing long ball, trying to play possession soccer. They didn't have the better of the play against Wanger, but they were able to possess the ball, and that kept Wanger off the score sheet. And that's key. And if, if Penn can do that, or can, either one of these teams can do that, the key is, yeah, you don't want to send the ball long. And sending the ball into a 50-50 situation, it's, uh, it's up for grabs. You want to maintain possession, so that is a key point. Jennifer Collins now with her header. It went almost an own goal there on the Kingsman as it went off the back of the noggin of Kate Burr. And it looks like it may have also gone off one of the Irish because they're going to rule it a goal kick now for the Kingsmen. Beautiful backdrop of the downtown area of Indianapolis here at Coon Stadium. Here in the state championship game here between the Indianapolis Cathedral Fighting Irish and the Penn Kingsmen. Had a little bit of threatening weather earlier in the day. A lot of wind coming out of mainly the west during the semifinals. A couple eights right now, a couple eight counterparts. Uh, Kathy Kohot along with Alicia Sellers for the Kingsmen. So now Collins is going to come in, and this is really going to be almost like a corner kick here, Dan. Yeah, this is a, this is a dangerous situation for, for Penn's defense. They're just going to serve the ball in, try to hit to the far post. And this is a 50-50 ball, one touch. One touch can make a big difference here. Sure. There it Shot is. and a goal There's for the touch. Cathedral Fighting Irish as they went with a one touch there. And they have now taken a two to nothing lead in this match. And the goal is going to come at 24 31 of the match for the Irish. So, two nothing lead now for Cathedral. And we'll try to get confirmation on the header goal there for the Irish. We talked about how dangerous that is and serving a ball into the box like that and getting one touch, and they executed it perfectly, and they've, they've opened up this game 2 nothing here, and a great goal by Cathedral. Anna Parsons gets credit for the header on the play for the Irish, and uh, Anna doing a terrific job of following up that cross, and what, an up, what a chance to get her first goal of the season for the 5-4 junior. 14-10 remaining in the first half of play, and a 2-0 lead now for the Irish. Midfield third on the play over to Alex Hall, who picked up her goal as well on the set piece. And right now, a uh, very uphill battle now for this Penn Kingsman girls soccer team. Still a lot of time to be played, though, in this match. You don't want to move out of anything you've done to get yourself here in the campaign. Oh, gosh, there's lots of time left, but certainly Cathedral's in control, and, uh, you know, Seen goals, a lot of goals scored in a very short period of time, uh, many times. So this game's far from over. But Cathedral's in, in a good commanding lead, and, and Penn's just got to pick up their, their confidence level here and get back in this game. Alyssa Johnston is really going to be the key for Penn. She's uh, going to be going to Western Illinois, 13 goals and 7 assists. And Ashley Sill at 10 and 5. Those are the two leading scorers for the Kingsmen. And every, all the offensive prowess for Penn goes through those two young ladies. And they're looking for them, uh, for that kind of leadership and performance tonight. There's, there's nothing left. This is it. This is the last game of the season, and you've just got to give it everything you've got, and they're looking for their, 
for their uh, solid performance tonight as well. One, one of the things you got to try, if you can break the schneid and get off that, uh, that goose egg up there, boy, it just changes your confidence level and, you know, makes you just want to believe that you can get the job done.